Climate change is a fact. It is a fact and it is happening. Tuvalu is a flat atoll island nation of nine islands, eight main settlements, barely above, barely one meter above sea level. Just imagine that. We are the smallest island nation among the many small island states in the world that we are leading the fight, the fight on climate change. You know, in the recent talks in Copenhagen, in Denmark, it was to value that caused the deadlock with the United States, with Australia, with all these industrialized countries. Because why, if climate change is allowed to continue, the rate it is in the sea level rise and the warming of the, uh, the, the global temperature we will be the first island, together with other small island states, to disappear, submerge, submerge under the water. I am happy and proud to say as well, I was among the first leaders of the world to sign the Climate Change Convention. Right now, up to about five, six small islets have disappeared in Tuvalu all washed away by the sea. But there are people who are here in New Zealand, even including members of my community representing Tuvalu today, who have left Tuvalu because of the fear that they will be underwater over the years to come. My name is Jason Garman, and I work for Oxfam, which is a humanitarian and development organization. And I'd like to talk to you today more about climate change in Tuvalu and in the Pacific. For a long time, climate change was considered an environmental issue. But Oxfam is a human rights organization. And the reason that we're working on climate change now is because climate change is a human rights issue. Climate change is one of the greatest injustices of our time. And the reason is that it's not just affecting polar bears and animal species these days, it's affecting people as you've just heard and as you're well aware, being from Tuvalu. The injustice is that the people who have caused this problem are the people in the industrialized countries like New Zealand, the people who have put all the pollution into the atmosphere. And yet the people who are suffering the effects first and worst are those people in places like the Pacific Islands, in Tuvalu, the people who have put almost no pollution into the atmosphere and they're the least equipped to deal with the consequences. So we're helping them deal with worsening droughts, water shortages, helping people establish safe water supplies, rainwater catchment tanks, so that when there's a drought, they'll have something to drink, something to wash with, something to cook with. We're helping them do things like plant mangrove trees. What you're looking at here is a photograph from Tuvalu. And the quote from this man is that when he was young, he used to be able to throw a stone from where he's standing to the islands that are in the distance. And there's been so much erosion that you can see now it's quite a long way away. And one of the ways to help prevent that coastal erosion is by planting mangrove trees. So that's one of what we call an adaptation strategy. It's a way to help minimize the damage from climate change. So we need to encourage people to stop polluting the atmosphere as much as we do. And we can do that by pressuring our government, because right now our government is not taking a strong enough line on climate change. They've committed to reducing emissions 10 to 20 percent by the year 2020. And science, which they believe enough to believe that they should have a policy, science says that they have to reduce at least 40% by 2020. So not good enough on emissions. And they have to help with what we call adaptation funding. And that's providing money for communities like Tuvalu to help plant mangroves and build water supplies and prepare themselves for the impact of climate change. And I want to thank Tuvalu for being so strong and so staunch in calling for action to stop global warming.